here we are on slide four, or as I like to call it, so what's going on with theater? So, as we had talked about, Rome has basically kind of crumbled. Um, Christianity is taking over and basically wiping out theater. And so organized theater has virtually disappeared in Western Europe at this point. But some theatrical elements were still surviving and these were, um, there were still some remnants of the Roman mime acts floating around out there. Um, there were minstrelsy performances. There were still popular festivals and still pagan rites. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And there were Christian ceremonies as well, which we will also talk about in a little bit. So it was through these types of activities that theater slowly starts to reemerge after it had been almost completely wiped out and banned. It slowly starts to reemerge during the Middle Ages. So after the Roman Empire crumbles and the state stops financing performances because they just don't have the financing anymore, they can't pay for these performances anymore, all the mime troops broke up and the performers were sort of left with nothing to do. So they started forming like these one these bands of wandering performers and they would wander around until they found an audience they could perform for and they sort of became like storytellers and jesters and animal trainers jugglers you name it um, and they would just wander around until maybe there was a group of people and they'd be like hey will you pay us to put on a little act and that's how they would try to make money it's pretty rotten life and they were denounced by the church so they were also sort of outlaws in a way and there were also numerous festivals throughout Western Europe. These were outgrowths of those century-old pagan rites and rituals and festivals that we've talked about ever since we started talking about the ancient Greeks. All these religious festivals that have always involved theatrical entertainments, right? So these are still happening throughout Western Europe. And the church really tried to ban these festivals, but they didn't have a lot of success because People really liked these festivals and they were really used to them, having them every year, multiple times a year. And many people were actually only kind of like sort of Christian because they were basically forced to convert or they were enrolled as Christians when the ruler of their particular land converted. So they didn't feel like this deep allegiance to Christianity and they wanted to keep their, their festivals that they loved. So it was really hard for the church to ban these festivals and to stop them altogether. So the pagan rites persisted um, and eventually a lot of their elements found their way into Christian ceremonies. Why? Because the church couldn't ban them, couldn't stop them. So they took this approach of sort of like, if you can't beat them, join them. So the church is like, all right, can't get rid of these things. Um, let's take them over instead and give them like a Christian spin. <laughs> so um, one really significant example is, is this. A lot of historians argue um, that the date of Jesus Christ's birth being December 25th is just because the the Christians at, at this time in Western Europe realized that they really wanted to kind of take over um, a winter festival, a pagan winter festival that already existed every December and the Christians weren't having success banning it. So they were like, you know, what? we're just going to like take this over and make it like kind of a Christian festival instead. Um, and we'll say that it's to celebrate Christ's birth because Christ was born on December 25th. Um, and that way they were able to take over this festival and make it, give it a Christian spin and sort of like everyone was happy because the Christians made it into a Christian festival, but everyone still got to keep their fest, their winter festival. So it all sort of worked. Um, same thing with Easter. There was like an existing springtime festival and the Christians sort of like made it into, um, celebrating Christ's ascension into heaven as an Easter um, festival. So existing festivals were permitted to continue, but they were kind of reoriented towards Christianity. Um, 
And then Christian church masses and Christian services eventually began to incorporate drama as well in order to kind of like give them some life and energy and pizzazz. Um, for example, Palm Sunday began to be observed with this elaborate procession in which there was a figure representing Christ riding on a donkey, moving from outside of the city to a church. And people, there are churches still today that have Palm Sunday processions where you're kind of acting out the story of, um, of that part of Christ's journey. So drama starts making its way right into the Christian church services because they're realizing that people like drama. <laughs> people like um, theatrical elements. And so theater is kind of still around and it's kind of being able to reemerge in a certain way. I'll see you on the next slide.